Hi pilots and co-pilots, Brian here and I've got the next in my series of explains tools, utilities and plugins. So first my disclaimer, I'm still a beginner with explain and I'm just producing these to share things as I find them. So I figure other beginners with explain will want to know too. Uh, and if you've uh, seen any of my other videos, you might know that uh, I think ortho for XP photo scenery generation is about the best thing since sliced bread. So I think you would like to see how to create meshes yourself and get them into XP. I certainly did. So before I start, I've posted uh, links in the descriptions to the development thread uh, for where uh, the guy who's developed this is uh, busy helping people and people are learning how to do it. And I've also um, provided a link to his Dropbox where you can actually get the Ortho for XP software to help you build photo scenery in Xplane. So this tutorial is how I started using Ortho for XP. This is video one. In part, uh, in part one here, I'm going to show you how to generate a single tile and get it into X-Plane simply. And then we're gonna also show some footage from in X-Plane before and after. So you can get an idea of the kind of effect it will have. Uh, part two, um, I'll make a separate video, which won't be as long. And that will show you how to do batch builds to actually be able to generate more than one. Cause as you can understand doing this time and time again, you'd be there forever trying to generate the landscape for X-Plane. So some key things uh, for Ortho for XP here. If you look up in the top left, you can see I'm running version 1.19. At the time of me recording this video, that's the current version. If you have anything before that, I recommend getting version 1.19 as many of the awesome features didn't exist before this. Primarily that's that uh, with this, you can just unzip it to a folder and um, Go into the bin directory, find the .exe file. If you're a Windows user, double click on it and it all launches. So if you read any documentation or help that says you've got to download Python and get it installed or any other tools, none of that is needed for Ortho for XP anymore. You just need the download from uh, the Dropbox folder, get that onto your machine, um, unzip it, unzip it into a location with lots of disk space. And also beware that what we're going through here will use lots of bandwidth over time if you do multiple tiles with this. So if you don't have lots of disk space and you don't have lots of bandwidth on your internet connection, this tool probably isn't for you. So with a simple launching, this is what it comes up with. Now on the left hand side here, you can kind of see this is our workflow. Uh, we start from the earth tile map where we will pick the tile. So no needing to know our coordinates, we can pick it through to figuring zoom level. So I'll get to that, then vector data, mesh, build the tile. A lot of this stuff, you know what? You don't have to worry a lot. The defaults out the box work really well. And we're gonna show that today. So first of all, we'll click on the earth tile map. So here you can see the uh, tile map has loaded up and all the bits in blue is scenery I've generated. So just some idea of disk space, this area here at zoom level 16, which I'll get to in a minute, that's taken up about five to 600 gig of data on my disk, just for that. I haven't even done Eastern Europe there. I've done practically none of North America. So bear in mind, you're going to need a lot of disk space and a lot, as I said, a lot of bandwidth for downloading. So I'm going to, if I can, Scroll across here, we'll pick somewhere else. There we go, I've done a couple of examples. I'm going to do this tile here just below Seattle because I'm hoping one of these two will have Mount St. Helens in it. I'm not sure which one of these two it's going to be. Okay. I'm going to choose this tile where my mouse pointer is right in the middle of the screen and following the instructions on the top left it says to select activate latitude longitude double click so there we go and now we have a nice yellow border showing that we're going to process this square I'm going to exit this and go back to the main screen we've now picked our tile and it's put the longitude and latitude in here. Now, 
I keep zoom level for 16, which if you're anything above a few hundred feet above the ground, looks absolutely amazing. You can go up to like zoom level 18, 19. Uh, I did that to start with. It, improved, it produced tiles of insanely huge size. And once you're off the ground, you really didn't notice the difference. Feel free to try it. I tried it because of course I didn't believe everybody else who said zoom level 16 is probably what you need. And I went back and read it at a 16. Now I will show you some interesting things here. The other thing here is you can choose your source. This is the satellite imagery source you get it from. BI is Bing. Um, Geo2, go to that's Google. Uh, I have data issues with those. They lock me off very quickly. And I found that if doing much of the UK, Europe, and certainly in the United States, that Bing actually provides very good satellite imagery. So, so for today's example, we're going to stick with that one. Now, if you don't want all your map to be at zoom level 16, certain features to be at a higher or lower zoom level, you can choose to click on the custom zoom button. So here we have uh, the screen that comes up when you do that. We're going to choose the, the preview to come from OSM, zoom level 11. We don't need a lot. It's just going to download that off the internet. So boom, there we go. This is zoom level 11 for this particular. Oh look, Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument. So that's totally the area I wanted to generate for this. So you know what? I'm going to choose zoom level 16 for that particular area. I am going to so I do shift, I start clicking, and you can see I am drawing a shape around there, and I'm going to save that. There we go. In fact, I wonder which bit is the actual area that's down here somewhere, isn't it? So I'm going to do that area and zoom level 18. Oops. I do find it jumps occasionally like that. So holding shift down. There we go. I've set that area. Zoom level 18. So here, once we've uh, chosen the custom zoom level, I've actually finished the tile, but uh, because videoing it is exceedingly tedious and as you can see down here, it's taken over a thousand seconds, but I basically chose the zoom level up here and we finished that part. And I clicked on step one, which was build vector data. That took about a minute. Step two, which was build base mesh. That took about a minute. We just text scrolling on the right. Step 2.5 and finally step three, which here has taken over a thousand seconds. And here we can see all this um, missing ortho file. So it's been downloading files off the net and it's now done. The final thing to do, I wasn't going to go into this too much today, but it's building overlays. So this will give you photo scenery. But if you want your buildings, your trees, your roads with the cars, you need an overlay over the top of this. Um, you can point this to your uh, default um, X-Plane scenery folder. Um, or you can choose a custom one. So if I choose a custom one, if I go up into my X-Plane 10 folder. I'm not sure you can see this screen. No, you can't. The joys of trying to record this live. Um, anyway, you can't. Uh, in the, your default X Plane 10 folder, you can go there or you can go into your custom scenery. I happen to have the very awesome uh, HD global scenery installed, and I'm going to take the overlay from that. So I choose that folder and that appears in here in my custom overlay folder and then I do build overlay and this is the final part. So once this is done, what you want to do is go to your um, ortho for XP folder where you've generated this stuff and look in a folder called tiles. And I've created a folder in there it's called like plus 46 minus 123. 
that will be the tile specific to the photo scenery you've just generated. So what you can do is you can copy or perhaps to save disk space, move that to your custom scenery folder in your Xplain implementation. Uh, we, there's different ways to do it later, but we'll cover that in part two of this video. So just simply move that folder into your custom scenery folder in your Xplain implementation. And that photo scenery will now pick up the next time that uh, you load Xplane. There's another folder that happens to exist. Oh, that's just finished building. There's another folder that exists in your Ortho for XP, and that's the Y Ortho for XP underscore overlays folder. What you want to do is copy that into your custom scenery folder as well. That will contain the overlay information. Now, if you want to get smart, I would watch my other video where I really recommend using X Organizer because this will really help you figure out the ordering in your scenery.ini file for getting Xplane to launch correctly. And I'm not going to cover that in this little video, but if you need advice, then just give me a shout. But go and look up X Organizer for managing that, and that will help you make sure that when you launch Xplane, it will pick up the photo scenery and you'll actually see it. So, for the last part of this video, You'll see me over in x -plane where I'll show a before and after for looking at Mount St. Helens from the air. So here you join me. This is with the Autogen scenery. And we're just actually flying around Mount St. Helens right now, which is the area, of course, I was really interested in. I'm just going to give us an outside view. Yep, and it, yeah, yeah, kind of looks awesome, but it's auto gen, so it does a very good job. I have to say. As we look around, auto gen mountains here. I, I have chosen a mountainous region. If you want to go and see uh, built-up areas? Go look at my other videos of southern England and so on, where you could see a, a generated tile and see what it looks like, but. This was more just to show you how to do it. And you can see rivers in the distance there. I mean, it looks really good. But anyway, I'll switch back to an inside view. And we're going to come back in a second for you. And you'll see the same photo scenery tile we just created. So, here you join us again in roughly the same location. This time with the photo real scenery that we just generated so let's have a look there we can see Mount St Helens and I think you'll agree that looks spectacularly different you you can see the snow perfectly and you can certainly see within this square here that they the mountains look very very real go to an outside view for you here so I think you'll agree that has an absolutely stunning effect and you can see the lava flow out here and there's the glacier there I mean that's great for sightseeing. So there we go. In today's video, you've managed to quickly walk through um, picking a tile, choosing custom zoom levels, and then generating a tile. And so actually up ahead, you can see about the boundary edge of this tile. Look, just through the middle there. And there's distance is autogen, and this side is photo scenery. I mean, Autogen looks fine until you see photo scenery next to it, and there is no comparison. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it may seem like a long and tedious video for many people, but for others who are trying to just figure out how to get going with Ortho for XP, I hope maybe it's got you going, and you'll give this a go. As I said, watch your disk space, watch your bandwidth, um, but have a great time, and 
This will revolutionize the way that you fly with X-Plane. Uh, thanks for watching today. And uh, come back, subscribe, like my videos, let me know that it's worth my time doing this. And check back and I'll create some more videos soon. Thank you and goodbye.